The Made in China 2025 plan is a comprehensive 10-year-long initiative launched by the Chinese government in 2015 to upgrade the country's economy by promoting innovation. Beyond the purely economic effects, this ambitious project also has important geoeconomic consequences and this has raised concerns amongst other powers, notably the United States. As a matter of fact, the trade war initiated by the Trump administration can largely be interpreted as a response to China's bid to become a leading high-tech manufacturer via this initiative. But what is the Made in China 2025 initiative and what are its implications? I'm your host Kasim and thanks for joining me for another KJ vid. In this video we will discuss the progress and the geoeconomic implications of the Made in China 2025 plan. But just before we begin, this video has been sponsored by writemanage.com. WriteManage is a new task tool to help you easily manage your writers and to monitor the progress of your writing content. I personally use this tool to help me organize my team of researchers as it means I don't need to keep searching through long trails of emails and can easily track all my different writing projects. Whether you manage writers for your YouTube channel, blog or simply your own writing, I highly recommend you to check out WriteManage. The Made in China 2025 plan was announced in 2015 and outlines China's industrial policy for a decade. Its strategic objective is to turn China from a low value added export based economy into an advanced manufacturer relying more on domestic consumption. This would allow China to avoid in the middle income trap, to ensure a robust growth in the coming decades and to effectively compete with developed economies. To achieve this, the operational objective that the government has set is to develop the high-tech sector notably in 10 key industries. The most important are information technology and 5G telecommunications, artificial intelligence and robotics and new energy vehicles. But the plan also includes aerospace, naval industry, railway transport, power generation, agriculture, new materials and biopharma. It also states that China will need to domestically produce 40% of core components and materials by 2020 and 70% by 2025. It must be noted that the plan also responds to precise needs. For example, developing green vehicles and energy helps to tackle pollution. Increasing the production of food and component allows to get closer to strategic self-sufficiency. Progress in maritime shipping supports trade and so on. At the practical level, the Chinese authorities plan to develop such industries by applying a wider range of tools. Direct subsidies, tax exemptions, low interest loans, promoting large state owned enterprises and obtaining foreign technology by merging and acquisitions or joint ventures. These methods are typical of the Chinese state driven economic model but the plan also pledges to promote more market oriented policies such as ensuring better market regulations, standard setting and intellectual property rights protection. To some degree the initiative can be seen as a continuation of previous Chinese industrial policies. A policy paper released in 2006 already underlined the importance of domestic production and in 2010 seven strategic emerging industries to develop were identified. Yet Made in China 2025 is far broader in scope. As a matter of fact it wants to upgrade the whole manufacturing process and not simply to promote innovation. It does not focus exclusively on high-tech sectors but also on traditional ones and it leaves more room for private initiative. The plan also takes inspiration from similar strategies outlined by other advanced economies like Japan and most importantly Germany. As a matter of fact, the Made in China 2025 plan resembles Germany's Industry 4.0 which promotes intelligent manufacturing by integrating the Internet of Things into the production process to boost efficiency and productivity. But again, China's project is sensibly different. First, it is more ambitious as it does not limit itself to upgrading the existing industry with new technologies but wants to implement measures to transform China into a world-class advanced manufacturer. Secondly, while Germany's plan also includes government funding, it is only limited to research and development and maintains the German market open for foreign competition whereas China adopts a more state-driven and protectionist stance. Finally, the project can also be considered as a domestically focused complement of the One Belt One Road initiative. The latter seeks to sustain China's economic growth by opening new markets and by accessing precious natural resources abroad, whereas Made in China 2025 aims at developing its technological and industrial base at home. At 
first glance, Made in China 2025 may be regarded as a simple industrial policy to promote economic growth in the long term. But its ultimate goal of making China a leading economic power to the forefront of technological innovation and the policy tools to reach this objective have raised much concerns in other countries, notably in the United States, Europe and Japan. The first and most obvious reason is that such countries are worried about the rise of China and fear to lose their technological edge over it. After all, this is a legitimate concern. If the Chinese economy continues growing, then it will surpass America's. This would give China even more economic resources to pursue its geopolitical interests. Moreover, China-based firms have already obtained an important market share in significant sectors even in the West, like in the case of Hawaii for smartphones or Lenovo for laptops, thus threatening the predominance of American, European, Japanese and South Korean companies. In this regard, China's policies on how to obtain the technologies required to achieve the objectives of the Made in China 2025 plan are also raising concern, especially in the US. There are three practices that are especially controversial. First, it is argued that the subsidies and fiscal facilitations that China is implementing to support innovation distort the markets and give its companies an unfair advantage over Western ones. Secondly, Chinese investments abroad and notably its merging and acquisition operations are believed to be largely motivated by the need to gain precious technology. Thirdly, China is accused of implementing a systematic policy of foreign technology transfer, also known as FTT. According to critics, China obliges foreign companies that invest on its territory to work in joint ventures with local firms and to transfer them their technological know-how. Once again, this is deemed unfair and a violation of intellectual property rights. According to a 2018 survey performed by the US Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, 21% of the 434 responding US firms were pressured to cede technology to their Chinese partners, and this figure reaches more than 40% in the case of high-tech firms. Another survey by the EU Chamber of Commerce led to similar results, with 19% of 532 companies stating that they felt compelled to transfer their technology. However, it's necessary to clarify the nature of this obligation. In some cases, it comes from Chinese laws and regulations, and a company can either comply voluntarily or challenge this in a court. But if it does so, often the court does not act with impartiality and it obliges the firm to transfer the technology to its Chinese partner. In other cases, the measure is indirect. Companies that do not comply are denied or lose access to the vast Chinese market and therefore decide to accept the transfer. China justifies its policies stating that they are necessary to ensure economic development and improve the living conditions of its people, noting that in the past other catching up countries like the US or South Korea have also implemented measures to obtain foreign technology. The legitimacy of similar practices is controversial and debated even in the West. Nevertheless, FTT is a major issue in relations between China and its economic partners. The EU has presented a case at the World Trade Organization over Chinese regulations on the approval of investments and joint ventures, claiming that they oblige firms to transfer technology and therefore violate the rules that WTO members must respect. On its part, the Trump administration has decided to impose tariffs on Chinese products for a total value of more than $250 billion, to which Beijing replied with analogous measures worth $110 billion. While America's trade deficit with China also played a role, concerns over FTT also had a major and probably even more important impact. Apart from purely economic issues, the US considers technological appropriation by China as a national security concern. The Department of Defense and Intelligence Agencies have published reports stating that such practices are a threat to the US, not only because they erode its technological edge, but also because many of these technologies have a double civilian and military use. Not surprisingly, regulations and intellectual property protection are central and thorny issues in the ongoing negotiations to put an end to the US-China trade war, and finding a common agreement will not be an easy task. It should be noted, that US tariffs have already had an impact on the industries that Beijing wants to develop under the Made in China 2025 plan. Production has shrunk or slowed down in areas like robots, new energy cars or semiconductors and with time this may push China to make concessions. The Made in China 2025 initiative is an ambitious plan that has the potential to profoundly change China and the global power distribution, 
by making the country a leading advanced economy. Today we are at less than half the time span set to achieve its goals and some notable success has already been reached. Several Chinese firms have become global players in the high-tech sector and China is poised to be at the forefront of new technologies like 5G communications or artificial intelligence. But attaining the plan's objectives depends on economic stability and many powers are opposing Beijing's trade policies which may even backfire by pushing economic actors to invest elsewhere or to take countermeasures like the US did. In this context, the upcoming years will reveal whether the initiative will be successful or not. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ vid. What are your views on the Made in China 2025 plan? Do you think it will succeed or fail? Will the US sanctions further hurt China or could China and the US even go to war? We would love to hear your views in the comments below. Please consider supporting us on Patreon so we can produce more of these geopolitical reports and to help keep our channel independent from political influence. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.